A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. Mary stayed outside the tomb weeping and as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned around and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he told her. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. sudden encounter with realities of great magnitude can bring about profound qualitative changes in the lives of individuals. This type of experience, though rare, are not too few to escape our attention. It was one such experience with sickness, old age, and death that would force a young Indian prince, Siddhartha, to abdicate his throne. And he would go on to become the Buddha, the awakened one, the enlightened one. One contact with the plight of a fellow prisoner in the Auschwitz camp would force this priest to sacrifice his life on the altar of charity. And he would go on to become Saint Maximilian Maria Kolbe. Again, it is this contact with uh, the destitutes and the dying of the streets of Calcutta that would force this nun to leave a comfortable and secure life behind the walls of a Loreto convent and she would go on to become Mother Teresa. Now mind you, these are human realities. And so, if human realities and contact with them can bring about 
such qualitative changes in the lives of people, imagine the transformation that will come about people when they come into contact with the divine reality. As you go through the pages of the scriptures, the Old and the New Testament, you find a series of individuals who come into contact with God, who have an experience of God, and they are never the same. That is the story of Abraham, of Moses, of Isaiah, of Jeremiah, Hosea, Peter, and Paul, and others. And today, we celebrate yet another saint, Mary of Magdala, someone who was healed by the Lord, someone who experienced a conversion to the Lord, and someone who would fall in love with God and would remain in that love all the days of her life. And it is this love, this longing, this desire to be close to her Lord and Master, teacher and preacher, that would make her stay with him through thick and thin. There she was, following the Lord as she went from village to village, teaching and preaching, healing and building up God's kingdom on earth. There she was, shelling out from her savings, to provide for him and for the apostles. And again, it is this love, this profound love that she had for her master that would make her stay put at the foot of the cross even as he lay dying on it. And it is this love, this longing, this desire to be close to him that would draw her and force her to go to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark. It's unfortunate that uh, history would paint Mary Magdala as a converted prostitute. Truth is to the contrary. She is someone that fell in love with the Lord. <laughs> and that is the meaning of conversion, moving towards the Lord, being drawn to the Lord, and uh, being close to him. And so today, as we go through this Eucharist, let's pray that you and I may have that love that is so very characteristic of Mary Magdalene, that we will make our own the words of the psalmist. On my bed, I remember you. On you, I muse through the night, for you have been my help. In the shadow of your wings, I rejoice. Or elsewhere, as you would say, as a deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is longing for you, my Lord. And if you haven't fallen in love with the Lord, it's about time that you did. That's what we call being Christian. That's the meaning of holiness. And that's what it means to have that personal rapport with the Lord. And our parish also has the vision statement to know and love Jesus and follow him in compassionate service. Let's pray for this grace that you and I may love the Lord tenderly and may follow him closely like the saint of the day.